everyone, TPS Miner here. Welcome back to the TPS Miner channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you a simplified way of using LOL Miner version 1.48 for Windows for your LHR graphics cards. So before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about the last two releases of LOL Miner, and then we'll go over to the test bench and take a look. So 10 days ago, LOL Miner version 1.47 was released, and this was a Linux only version that improved the LHR unlocker for ETHash to unlock 77.2 to 78.2% of GDDR6 memory graphics cards and 76 to 77% on GDDR6X. Well, for the Windows miners, you had to wait an extra week, but LOL Miner did release version 1.48 uh, that introduced that LHR scheme into Windows. So they do recommend using driver 512.15 and before we go any further into this video, uh, go ahead and download LOL Miner version 1.48 for Windows 64 and get it installed. And then we'll hop over to the test bench and take a look. I will uh, drop this link in the description below so you can access this GitHub. Okay, so let's jump over and take a look at LOL Miner version 1.48. So again, as I mentioned, this is the version that is going to increase your LHR unlock uh, potential on your graphics cards. And we're gonna look at two different batch files. I wanna first look at the batch file that comes with the miner. And we'll talk through this a little bit. So the first thing in here that I wanna highlight are the variables that need to be set. The first one is for the pool. The second one is for a backup pool. The third one is for your wallet and dot worker name. And then there's this section for extra parameters. So uh, you can add extra parameters in here. You need to go back and look on the wiki for their extra parameters section, and it'll give you some information on what these extra parameters are. But I'm gonna go ahead and cover some of the key ones uh, here momentarily. So if we keep going down, the next thing is the, uh, once you're done with the user editable part, then you get into this section here which is a bunch of code that essentially is just looking for the executable for the miner. And once it finds it, then you set a variable here for where the miner is located. And then there's another section here that's determining which Windows version you're using. And then based on the Windows version you're using, it will set up and start the miner. So this is all well and good, but to me, this is a little cluttered, a little difficult to follow. I'm not a software guy. So I wanted to come up with a simpler way to look at my miner. And so I created a different batch file. So what I've done is I went with more of an approach. This actually looks a lot like what you would see in T-Rex. So I kept the section intact for where the user editable part is for setting the variables. And we still have the pool, but I'm only using the single pool we still kept the wallet where I've got my Ethereum wallet dot my worker name and my test bench, we did name the changing table. So I'll put a link to a video uh, up above for you to take a look uh, to see why we came up with that name. And then I added another variable here called devices. And what this is gonna do is allow me to select which devices in my test bench I want uh, to be using LOL Miner. And then a, th a final variable for locking the core clock. Again, because this is going to be used for my LHR graphics cards, I do have a 3060 LHR graphics card in the test bench as device zero. And I'm going to be locking the core clock for that 3060 LHR at 1500. So now to replace all of the information that was down below here previously in the other version of the batch file, I've simply put a, within parentheses, the absolute path to the minor uh, executable. And I found that by going into the directory where all of the mining files are, I look for the executable and I right mouse click and go to properties. And I can see for location, uh, it's in my C drive and I can just highlight this and copy and paste that directly into my batch file. So the next thing is the variables. So all we really need to get this started is an algorithm. So that is dash dash algo, and the algorithm is ET hash, all caps. The next, we need the pool, dash dash pool, and 
to specify the variable, we put exclamation point, then in all caps, pool, followed by another exclamation point. And what that's going to do is point back to the variable that we assigned earlier in the batch file. So our pool will be our ethermine pool. The next variable is user, user, dash dash user. And in this case, it's exclamation point, all caps, wallet, followed by another exclamation point. And again, that simply points back to the variable that we specified above of our wallet dot worker name. Then I've added another variable devices, dash dash devices, and this just, again, same pattern, exclamation point, devices, exclamation point, points back to the devices variable that we specified. And then dash dash CCLK, and that is exclamation point, CCLK, exclamation point, and again, simply points back to the variable that we had assigned. And I've gotten rid of all of the additional information here that while it might be useful, isn't absolutely necessary. And to me personally, this is just an easier batch file to look at and to understand what I'm doing. Now, if I do add in a second card, I can simply put in another uh, comma. So if, if I put in say a second 3060 LHR, I would add that second device as comma one, and then I could specify a lock core clock for that device as well. Or if this was a device that required a different core clock, then again, let's just say I want to set the next one at 1530, for example. So again, this looks very similar to what we would do in, say, T-Rex. Okay, so let's go back to just the variables and the executable with the different um, the different variables that we're going to need for mining just on this 3060 LHR. And you can see we've got the pool, we've got the wallet, we've got the, um, we've got the worker name, we've got the devices specified, we've got the core clock, but what we don't have is the memory clock. Now, from what I can tell, LOL, LOL Miner does have the ability to specify a memory clock, but not a memory clock offset. So if anyone does know how I can do this with an argument to apply an offset, please let me know in the comments below. I wasn't able to find anything. So for setting the memory clock offset, we are still gonna use MSI Afterburner. And for this 3060 LHR, I want to apply a memory clock offset of plus 1300. So I've done that. I've set my fan speed to 45% and I am leaving the power limit at 100 because we're going to be using the locked core clock to control the power. So let's go ahead and start this uh, batch file and let's take a look and see what we've got. So this is the mine underscore eth underscore ethereum or ethermine.bat, which is the cleaned up version of the batch file. And we do have to run it as administrator because we are setting the core clock. And you can see we're off and running. Now, the other thing you'll notice in the batch file, I didn't specify anything about the card being an LHR. And let's quickly look here. You can see we've set the overclocks, the plus 1500, and we've built the DAG, uh, the DAG verification passed. And then you can see that the algorithm, or that the miner detected an unexpected low hash rate, checking if it's an LHR. And sure enough, it did detect LHR, and now it's starting the LHR calibration. So what it's gonna do is it's going to go through the process using the core clock that we provided, the memory clock that was set in MSI Afterburner, and it's gonna start calibrating the graphics card to try and unlock as much of the mining potential as possible. So the miner's been up for 10 minutes now, and you can see that the calibration is completed. We're at 37.54 mega hash at 109 watts, and our LHR unlock percent is 77.7%. So I do believe with some modifications to the overclocks, we could probably get this up to about 38, maybe a little over 38 mega hash. But the purpose of this video wasn't to talk about the overclocking of graphics cards. It was really to show you how I'm modifying or updating 
my LOL Miner batch files to make them a little simpler, a little easier to use, a little easier to read. And, um, you know, again, just to show you what the capabilities of LOL Miner version 1.48 are in Windows. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something today, please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, hit the notification bell to be notified of future content. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.